Hey, so I have a special guest with us today. We have uh, Greeny Travels, and I'm going to ask him 10 of the most popular questions that you may have about Thailand. Good morning, Greeny. Good afternoon, Julian. <laughs> we just had a nice uh, day at the golf course, and we're gonna inform our viewers today about some of the most popular questions they may have about Thailand. So, the very first question is, what are some things that are cheaper in Thailand and what are some things that are more expensive in Thailand compared to America? Well, Julian, I'll tell you, being the cheap Charlie that I am, not really, but I'm a little thrifty. I tend to stay away from the things that are more expensive and focus on the things that are cheaper here. It saves me some money. So definitely a huge draw for me to move to Thailand was the price of the food. I'm a huge foodie. I love Thai food, I love Asian food, I love any food, but you know, I like to try all kinds of different things. And being in Thailand here, going to all these small mom and pop shops, gives me a chance to really try some of that authentic Thai cuisine, you know, cooked by these elderly Thai ladies. A lot of them are older Thai women at these shops, and you know, I found that some this place or this place has like this dish that's great or that dish that's great, and it's just, you know, usually a dollar, two dollars, three dollars a meal. Um, I was recently looking at buying a car and because of import fees and stuff certain cars are a lot more money here if you buy one that's manufactured in Thailand actually they were manufacturing Fords here actually you know the Ford Ranger is a very reasonable car here but some of the expensive ones you know if you want a Volvo or you want a Chevy you know you're gonna pay a premium for those what else uh, lodging if you you know you're living in Thailand like me and you want to still travel and bounce around domestically hotel rooms are very inexpensive here compared to America America you're gonna pay you know the average for just a, a, a moderate inexpensive hotel rooms like a hundred dollars US here you're gonna pay about a thousand baht which is about thirty dollars give or take for you know a real decent hotel that's uh, some of the ones that just pop into my head right off the bat for someone who's looking to buy a condo in Thailand, would you recommend doing it or would you recommend just renting instead? That would be different for every single person. You know, there's no right or wrong answer. In my case, you know, I'm on like a 10 year plan. I know that I'm gonna be here at least 10 years, you know, give or take, maybe just half the year, but I wanted a permanent place so that when I leave, I can keep all my stuff. And, you know, luckily I had the luxury of having a few extra dollars to be able to, you know, buy a place with. If you don't have the money, but you want to be here, and you're on like a monthly salary, monthly pension, then renting will probably be better for you. Um, you know, I was just looking for somewhere to stock away some money, and you know, hopefully I break even. You know, if I break even after 10 years, and get most of my money back, but didn't pay rent for 10 years, then I, I made off big. And it, you know, I didn't want a small shoebox thing. I wanted a bigger place, so it works out great for me. You know, the next guy, you know, if you just like I said living on a pension every month then, then you probably can't buy a condo but there's plenty of great rentals here you can find anything you need so there's no right or wrong answer you know it's to each to each his own so now that you've been living in Thailand for for a little while do you do you ever miss America would you ever want to go back and live there for I don't know six months out of the year or eight months out of the year I probably will but I don't really want to when I went home last October for five weeks after about two weeks, I was pretty much ready to come back to Thailand. Then again, it was, you know, starting to get cold. I actually saw some snowflakes, which I had planned on never seeing again in my life, which obviously I will see them. But um, uh, to make, I'll say if I can arrange it where I'm, you know, heading out of Thailand, say in like April when it's starting to get super hot and skip some of the rainy months, you know, that might be all right. Really. Last year was, I think, an anomaly here. This year, it's really been rainy, uh, end of August, uh, September. So I think, you know, if I if I were to go to America, say from like, you know, May to through September, get a little of the football season, you know, where there's things that I want to do there, go out on lakes in Michigan, you know, that would be cool. I think that would be okay. It just has to be the right time of year. And, you know, I'm married here now, so obviously I want, you know, my wife to experience, you know, a little bit of my culture in America. So I think eventually, um, if I get her visa and everything, you know, maybe in a few years, we may kind of split time back and forth, but this is definitely, definitely my home now. I have a business here and, um, you know, it'll probably be two homes at some point. What are your top three favorite cities in Thailand 
that you would recommend expats to live in? To live, I would say what I would call the Eastern Corridor, which what I say from Bang Chan, which is like the uh, northern part of Rayon, Bang Chan, all the way to Nakula, Nakula, however it's pronounced, but that's like the northern area of, of Pattaya. You know, a lot of people like for me, the central Pattaya area is just too busy, too crazy. I'd get in too much trouble. So where I live near um, Bonsere, like right now we're in Pattaya, I can come here, you know, as much as I want. I drive, whatever, it's 20 minutes. And uh, Joan Tien's great. This whole area, the Eastern Corridor, I love it. You know, I feel like the weather's a little better here than Phuket. Now I would also consider Phuket, but I, I couldn't travel there when I was buying my condo and then I found something I liked here, so I bought it. But you know, Phuket, um, I'll give you four, Phuket, the Eastern Quarter, Bangkok, and Chiang Mai. Now, a lot of people like Hua Hin. For me, it's just a little too far to get to an international airport. I got two airports in Bangkok, and I got Utapau, which is only 20 minutes from where I live. So, you know, I can bounce around, I can go to other countries, I can bounce around Thailand, it's very easy. Hua Hin, although I do like it a lot, if you're gonna be a guy that just wants to not travel and stay in Thailand, we'll I'll give you that as a number five. I like that area too. So five areas. If you're coming to just visit and places, you know, oh, you gotta see this. You know, there's a lot that I haven't seen. I'm still working on, you know, I got a huge list of places, but I really love Pai. That was such a cool place to drive around that Mei Hong Song Loop. It's so beautiful up there. It's amazing, you know. Uh, and then, you know, Krabi. Krabi, you gotta, that's a must see, you know. Even maybe more than uh, the PP Islands and everything. Krabi is is just breathtaking. The cliffs and everything there. What are some uh, do's and don'ts that foreigners should be aware of in Thailand? Don't touch Thai people. On, I'm just joking. Everybody knows you don't touch Asian people on the head. Funny story for you though. 2018, um, me and a friend who had been to Asia before came. We brought a, another friend with us that had never been there. And so we're in Hong Kong, and we just got there, and it's like two in the morning, and me and my friend went, wanted to go eat, we were starving, and this is the guy that had never been to Asia. And we started drinking, got drinking, and this waitress was an older, uh, you know, Chinese lady in Hong Kong, and really friendly. But then my friend at the end, he's laughing, joking around, and he patted her head, it was like slow motion, I'm like, no! But that's obvious, and I think the lady kind of got mad about that. Um, but there's a lot of faux pas, like, you know, they're very clean here. Take your shoes off when you go into somebody's house. Um, do's and don'ts. Just be polite, uh, smile, you know, try to learn a little bit of the language, which I suck at, my memory sucks, but I, you know, I got certain terms. I'm starting to be able to get in the restaurants by myself without my wife and order things. And just really uh, embrace the culture, you know, learn a lot about it and uh, make a lot of friends, make a lot of new friends. Um, don't give too much information out about yourself, you know, unless you get really close with people, you know, I was saying, you know, if you're a lot of single female travelers, you come to another country, don't give too much information to people. You never know who you can trust or not. That's just a basic traveling thing, but whatever. For someone who is living in Thailand for a long period of time, do you recommend cooking your own food or is it a lot easier and maybe even cheaper just to go out to eat every meal? Yeah, we were cooking quite a bit and buying groceries, and it seems like, just like at home in America, a lot of things will go to waste, you know, use this, you throw away, so I buy, I mostly eat out, and you know, I try to pick, I know certain places, like I go and get my little, you know, chicken and vegetables, where I know, okay, like that place might use dark meat, this place uses nice chicken breast for their stir fry, you may pay 30 more baht, but it's worth it, you know, so I would eat out more. Um, like I just went grocery shopping yesterday and I bought, I usually buy like some tomatoes, cucumbers, a couple cans of tuna fish. And then just if it's a night, like I don't feel like going out, I'll just eat tuna fish on either like some real thin, you know, kind of healthier crackers, things like that. But I usually eat out. Nice. So you and I have kind of reached a, a decent milestone for our channels. Uh, we both uh, reached over 10,000 subscribers and uh, both of us have uh, a million views on our channel. Um, what advice would you have for anyone who may want to start uh, doing YouTube? You know what, you may tell your friends, oh, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel, and they laugh at you, like my friends are like, whatever, that's stupid, whatever. But 
it's just like any other, and it's not a job for me, it's just a hobby. I just, we were talking about before, like what would you do to keep yourself busy? And that's what I do, you know, I love taking video, taking pictures, that type of stuff. But, um, you know, people say don't do it, don't listen to them because I, I mean, I'm not any, I mean, I'm probably a little better than I was, but I'm learning editing, you know, I think, I feel like my videos, you know, it's just like any job that you get, you know, you're going to learn, you're going to improve, you're going to get more uh, uh, um, relaxed on camera, things like that, you know, it's something that has to be learned, like any job, so just if you got the time and, and you can go for it, go for it, but I would not like quit my job and say I'm going to go be a YouTuber and not have anything to fall back on, you know, that's taking a big risk. But if you're doing it and it seems like it's catching on, you can do it. I mean, you know, Chev and Dev, for example, you know, they really got good at it and, and did great editing and their channel's taken off. They're at 111,000 subscribers. I saw them in Phuket in December. We ran into each other and we're talking and they had less subscribers than me. And, uh, you know, just a young, good looking couple that's traveling all over and making, you know, really know how to edit well and, and taking great visual shots of drones and everything, you can you can make a career out of it and live a travel lifestyle or any niche that you have, you know, talk about automotive, anything. Just do it, That's this is the wave of the future. In your opinion, a lot of people think that they could come out here and, and live in Thailand for, you know, a thousand dollars a month or two thousand dollars a month. In your personal opinion, with you living out here, if someone really wants to truly retire in Thailand and enjoy Thailand, what do you think is kind of like the minimum uh, monthly income goal that people should be aiming for? You know, I think to live a comfortable retirement lifestyle where you get to do a lot of the things you want to do and that, you know, you could survive. Okay, there's a difference between living and surviving. You could survive here for under a thousand a month. You can get a little place, you eat Thai food. I mean, you really can survive. You want to be able to do stuff like, you know, I go golf, I go little side trips, you know, I want to go down to Copenhagen, go to Koh Samui. I just go for a couple of days. So I'd say, you know, that type of lifestyle, about 3,000 US dollars a month. Um, if you want to just notch it down a little bit, maybe not take as many domestic trips, but still really enjoy yourself in any given place, about 2,500 US dollars a month. Did I say about before? 3,000 US dollars. I think, you know, that gives you a little extra flexibility to travel domestically or Southeast Asia. And then 2,500, is a real comfortable lifestyle, but really, I'd say anything a thousand or up, you could survive. You know, it just wouldn't be that great of a lifestyle. Yeah, I kind of agree with you. I would say uh, anywhere from three to five thousand would probably be the goal. Yeah, it depends. Now, see, you lived in Bangkok a long time, and yeah, if you're gonna live in Bangkok and you want to live a quality life in Bangkok in one of the, you know, like. Ekamai or Asok or Siam or one, you know, one of the nicer, more fun areas in Bangkok. Yeah, you're gonna pay three, you know, four or five thousand dollars a month. Yeah. You can live out here though in the eastern eastern corridor, you know, easy twenty five three thousand a month. Yeah. Also, uh, something I wanted to mention too. It depends what's what's important to you. Is it important that you have a big condo, or is it more important? Uh, for your life that you go traveling a lot because if you if you don't really care about the big condo you could rent a Condo, uh, let's say a studio for maybe two hundred three hundred dollars a month, mm -hmm. right? And then you could use the rest of that money to go travel. Yeah But if you're someone who wants the big condo then that could blow half of your your monthly uh, Income right there right? just on the big condo right. yeah. yeah, like I said to each his own, you know, everybody's got their own idea of what retirement's going to be or, you know, life after work or, you know, even digital nomads, you can still work here. So everybody has their own idea of what they want to do. Just whatever you want to do, you can do here. What are some things that uh, keep you occupied out here in Thailand when you're bored? What are a few things or hobbies that maybe some retirees could pick up? You know, I, especially this time of year, there's been a lot of rain. I mean, I like to just when I'm on a trip, I want to go out and do stuff all the time, but I feel like when I'm at home, I could just relax and stay in my condo with the air con and just fiddle around on my computer, you know, make some videos for YouTube and edit them and watch Netflix and relax and then go down to my pool and just relax, just relax and slow down a little bit. You got to learn to slow down when you retire 
and then you know I maybe golf once or twice a week and trying to start to increase that and or just go meet friends like right now for coffee or just chit chat uh, last night met a friend for dinner had a couple beers and box array you know just be retired don't feel that you got to push yourself to do too much you know once you retire you're Tired, just relax, chill, de stress, decompress. That's what I've been trying to do. And the last question if there's three places in uh, Thailand that you visited that you think every tourist should travel to, what are three places you would recommend? You know, there's a lot of places I hear Koh Lipe is awesome. I haven't been there yet, but the places that I've been, Pai is a great place to go, Koh Tao and uh krabi ah interesting and what, about, and what about in bangkok what's uh, a couple places in bangkok people should definitely check out you know if you if you're into like mixed martial arts definitely go check out some live muay thai fighting at the big uh oh it's i forgot the name but there's the big uh stadium there i've been there a few times that's really fun um you know if you're just gonna be there one time that's your only trip to thailand probably ever you know definitely go check out the uh Grand Palace, uh, you know, some of the big temples, uh, go to Icon Siam Mall right on the water, take a take a water taxi down the Chao Phraya River, it's really cool, and it's like, for like five baht, you could get great views of the city down the river. Okay, well that sounds good, Greeny, well thank you very much for uh, meeting today and doing this talk, and I'll, uh, I'll miss you. I might not see you for uh, another year or so, but... Um, Maybe we'll catch up when I go to America. Uh, next, uh, <laughs> I'm going to be there in the spring. Maybe we'll catch up. Okay, well, we'll keep in touch. Everybody in the comments below, make sure to thank Greeny, too, for uh, answering your questions. Greeny out.